Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Mickey Hudson, and I am hosting today's FAF Facebook Live. And we are going to be making some picnic covers uh, for the summer holiday. Um, so we're going to talk about some uh, different ways to make some picnic, uh, to make some food covers, and uh, how to embroider on tulle uh, and netting and webbing and all that fun stuff. So anyway, have, come on in, have a seat. We're going to get right into it. So the first thing that I want to show you that we are going to be making is um, I'm going to throw, show you uh, an easy, what I call down and dirty. It's going to be very easy to make. Um, and then I'm also going to show you one that's a little more fussy. Um, and there's all kinds of them out there, but I'm going to just show you a couple. And I am also going to show you a cool little uh, bread basket. Uh, so let's take a look at the first thing we're going to take a look at here is um, this little this little food cover here. So as you can see, there's a little bit of netting with some embroidery. So this is great for your outdoor picnics and stuff like that to keep the bugs out of your food. Um, there's a little bit of elastic and all kinds of stuff. So this is the one that I call down and dirty, and I'm going to show you how I made this. Okay. You excited? I am too. So I am not going to be using embroidered net. I'm just going to be using, um, the netting that I have here, um, I'll talk about the how to embroider on netting uh, later. Now, this particular netting is you will often see uh, in bag making supplies because this particular netting is super nice for, for pockets and uh, stuff like that. So it's got a very open weave. So when you work with this kind of an open weave, you want to make sure that your embroidery design is nice and solid. Um, you don't want to have any running stitches kind of here because they're just there's nothing for it to grab onto. So just a really solid embroidery works really well on this. So I'm going to go ahead and show you this real quick. Move my camera so you got a little better angle. But what I did here was I traced, which you still can't see. All right. So I took my ramekin. It can be a bowl. It can be a casserole dish. It could be a pot. It could be anything you need a cover for. This is what's so cool is you make your own pattern. So what I did was I laid my bowl down and I traced around it. So I made a trace line. I used um, Frixion pen, so it's gone away, but I traced around and then I've made two inches. So I measured two inches out and made another circle. So everybody with me so far, I put my bowl or my pot or my casserole dish or whatever I'm using and I traced around it. And then I pulled out my tape measure and just marked two inches, two inches, two inches, two inches, and then made a circle. Okay. Then what I did was I came in and I made a smaller circle from that one. Uh, normally I do about two inches um, on a larger dish. So I would do two inches out and then two inches in. Uh, but because this one was so small, I only made it like, you know, a half an inch in. Okay. But when I say this, I just made a line. So once I added the two inches around here, I went and pressed my marks away. And then I measured in again. That's why I only have one ring here. Now what I did here is now I'm adding a fabric to the back. I need to make an opening for this embroidery. So one of the quick ways to do it is we're going to just put two layers of fabric right sides together. 
and I only need a, enough to cover this circle. And I'm going to come over to the sewing machine. Make sure my camera is on. So I'm going to come over to my sewing machine. So I am on the Fast Creative Icon 2, but these, these, um, the stitches that I'm going to be using are uh, available on all of the machines. So. All right. So I know that it looks a little fuzzy, but that is okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over and I'm going to select a straight stitch. And then I'm going to come down and I want to change the stitch length because it defaults to 2.5. I want to take change it to very, very, very small. So I'm going to 1.0. And then I'm going to attach my, just moving my cameras and all that good stuff for you. I don't want to make you guys dizzy. Um, I'll let you look at my, let, look at me while we're doing this. Oh, come on, you little stinker. There you go. I would really like a production crew, I tell you. So let's see. Can you guys see that? Okay, no. Let me change the angle a bit. There we go. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to stitch right on the line. So I'm just using my quarter of an inch that comes with the machine. If you have a faff that does not have a quarter of an inch foot, I'll highly recommend them. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about them because this is just your straightforward quarter of an inch foot, but there's all kinds. There's one with the blade in the middle for like stitching in the ditch. There's one with the blade on the side for helping you uh, with a quarter of an inch. And then there's all these marks, which I'll talk about in a minute. So I'm just going to go ahead and stitch on down. Now again, I am working around my camera. I'm just going to gonna get a little fuzzy because I'm going to go fast. And my camera is going to move. So don't mind me not sewing directly on the line because I'm literally, if you could see my face, I'm literally looking at the viewfinder in the camera. I cannot see the machine. All right. So basically what I'm saying is uh, don't judge me. <laughs> All right. So you got me here. I've got my circle going on here. I've got my nice tiny little stitches going on around. Some of you may be familiar with this technique and know exactly where I'm going. And some of you may not. But I have this nice circle here. And I want to have a pressed edge here. So I'm just going to cut right down the middle of it. And then I'm going to come and clip around about a quarter of an inch around. These are not the best scissors for this. Okay. 
and I am, it's like being a chef in the kitchen. If you've ever watched any of these cooking shows and they roll out their little, you know, backpack of knives, it's all about having the right tool for the job. And I'm that way with scissors. Um, I'm always, I love having the right tool for the job. So one of the things is now that we've cut this around and ideally a pair of shears would work best for cutting that around rather than my little applique scissors. So just your regular dressmaker shears would be great for that. You can also use a rotary cutter if you like to, to cut with the rotary cutter, which I normally do. And what we're going to do here is clip. And again, having the right tools for the job. These are little thread snips, um, but I use them for my clipping. Now, a little tip to give you, I will often watch sewing shows and all kinds of stuff. And one thing that just makes me crazy is when I see people with their dressmaker shears, which are big scissors, and they're cutting these little clips like this, and they're doing it like this. This makes me crazy. What happens if I sneeze? So I like using short scissors with a very sharp point, and I do not want to put the point any farther than I'm willing to cut. So I just want to be able to snip right to that line. So I just put the, the point where I'm willing to cut, and I'm just going to come around and clip my little but don't ever just get your scissors in there like that. If your points are not sharp enough for you to cut, that you have to go in, go get your scissors sharpened, get a new pair of scissors, do something, because it's going to make your life so much easier than cutting with bad scissors. All right, I'm not going to cut all the way around. I think you guys are starting to get the idea. But what we then do is we'll come, and I did cut this piece a little bit small. But what we'll do is we'll come and we'll take this, and now I can come and give this a flip and a press. I did cut this a little bit small. So I'll flip this over and give this a nice press so that it gives me this nice finished instead of a raw edge. Is everybody kind of getting that? Amy, is this making sense to you? I don't have my class feedback, so I need some feedback that it's making sense to you. All right. So once I have this and I have my center in the circle here, then I can come over and I'm going to change my foot. And I am going to, and it's very sad because right before I went live, like right before I went live, um, I had my favorite foot for this, which is the bi-level top stitch foot for IDT. So basically it has a, uh, marking on it and I can just butt my edge right up to that little marking and just stitch along here and it's somewhere under my machine table I didn't have time to go digging for it so I'm very very sad so we're going to use the regular foot but I'll show you what I'm talking about um, with the bi-level top stitch foot and if you are going to do this kind of top stitching at all, I do recommend the bi-level top stitch foot because it is amazing. If you do clothing, if you do a lot of top stitching, I highly recommend it. You don't want to see me. You want to see what's happening here. So what the bi-level top stitch foot does is it has a, a little ridge so that it will butt right up against the little ridge right here. And it also shows me where the edge of my fabric is so that I can keep everything exactly where I want it. I can put my needle, I can move my needle, I can do all that and get my stitches exactly where I want it. Okay. 
But what I want to do before I do that is I forgot to show you because I'm so excited about where I'm going that I forgot to, to go ahead and add my embroidery. So once I have this circle done, then I would come and add my embroidery. So here's where I would have my little, in, in my case, with this little ramekin, that I put this fabric right here so that I could just stitch this down. And again, you would stitch, press that all the way down. You wouldn't have this coming up. You would have all this edge, right? And then I would come in here and change my view so you can see better. There we go. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm just going to switch to a zigzag stitch just a straightforward zigzag stitch and I am going to change my width just a bit so I personally like about a three this is one of those things that this is a personal thing so even though I've changed it to three you may go I don't know what she's talking about I want a big old six millimeter it's all good you do you or you could say I want to do a decorative stitch or if you want to be a minimalist, you can just do a straight stitch. So it's entirely up to you. That is a design element. But I'm going to go ahead and do the zigzag. And this is where I really wish I had that. And I'm just going to stitch along. Now, one thing, too, if you are going to do any kind of stitch with the width, so a straight stitch, it wouldn't matter. But if you're going to do any kind of decorative stitch or a zigzag or anything like that, when you are working with a curve, whether it's an inside or an outside curve, you want to make sure that if I have to stop to make any adjustments, that as that zigzag is making that on an outside curve like this, it's going to stop on the outside when I make my adjustment. And if it were an inside curve, I would stop with it on the inside. But this is an outside curve. So if I have to stop, I want to make sure that I stop with the needle on the zig that is off to the right. So it doesn't matter so much for the zigzag, but it will matter if you are doing a decorative stitch. I'm not going to go all the way around. Okay. So now we're just going to do this little zigzag stitch around here. All right. Then I, you can come underneath here and just trim all this away. So this is, like I said at the beginning, this is the down and dirty. So for those of you that are going, okay, this is all, this is down and dirty. Yes, this is down and dirty. This is, I have a half hour before that barbecue starts and I need to whip something up really, really quick. All right. Are there any questions about any of that so far? No? Okay, good. All right. So I'm just going to run a straight stitch real quick because I just want to tack all this down. It's not going to be pretty because I'm not doing any flipping, but you guys can watch if you want. So I'm not flipping these edges or anything like that. I am just going to stitch it down so that I can get to the edges. And then I'm just going to finish the thing. Okay, I would keep clean it, 
clip it so that it looks at least clean on the other side. All right, but now we have the top done and we just need to finish the edge and add the elastic. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. So when it comes to finishing the edge, I'm gonna go ahead and use my overlock stitch, um, which is uh, foot number three, and it does come with most of your fast machine. And what I love, the reason I'm going to use this, let's talk about this real quick, because this is the overlock stitch, and this is kind of to duplicate a serger overlock kind of stitch. Now, it's not a serger stitch, but it's kind of a, a, a hack of it, you know, a tip, a, a trick. It's kind of as good as you can get without a serger. And one of the things with the, what a serger does is it forms stitches right over this pin so that it prevents the fabric from scooching in. And so that is what this foot does for you. And then this little guy adjusts so that you can put your fold or put your edge or anything wherever you want it to be. So you can use this as a guide and that'll feed over the pin. The stitches will feed over the pin. But I am just going to pretty much straight up just do a zigzag stitch along the edge. I am not trying to do an overlock stitch. I am just trying to do a zigzag stitch right along the edge. All right, so I'm gonna to go to a zigzag stitch. Again, I'm gonna change my stitch width. I'm gonna make it a little wider. I'm actually going to, let me show you what I'm doing. Um, so I'm gonna to go to a zigzag stitch. Okay. I'm going to change my width. I want it to be narrow. But I also want to change the position. So a lot of your electronic machines, um, you can move the needle over. And with the, the Faf Creative Icon 2, I can actually move the stitch as well. So what I'm going to do is I want to, whoops, move this way. So I'm going to move it over to the one position. So I don't know if you've know if you can see what's happening, but it's actually moving the stitch over because I need my focal point where I want my focal point to be. The stitch isn't where I need to be, so I'm moving the stitch to where it needs I want it to be. How cool is that? I think it's awesome. All right, so let's get this going. So what I'm doing is I'm letting the edge of the fabric ride along the little red guide, and it's just going to stitch right over the edge of the fabric. And once again, I cannot see what I'm doing. So this is just creating a quick down and dirty edge. So it's just a quick little edge. So if you don't want to do, if you want to do this technique, but put a little more finesse into it, then I would go ahead before I start sewing, you can go and press this down and do a stitch. You can do a straight stitch. I will often so often when I have something and I just want to press it about a quarter of an inch, I do not bother pressing. 
So when I have a quarter of an inch hem, all I'm going to do is just burn my fingers. So what I'll do instead is I'll go ahead and, you know, get my hem going. And I, yeah, this isn't going to work with this. I need my, my ring. And I will just go ahead and fold it up as I go. Now, I often will use, if I'm on a straight, I will use my, I will use my, um, how many of us have ever done that? None of you, none of you have ever done that before. I just know it. So what had happened was I um, changed my foot, but I didn't change my stitch. I'll change my needle right quick. Are there any comments, Amy? Any ouches? <laughs> That's what I did was ouch. All right. Let me put a non. Oh, I could put my things back on. I just want to be a uh, straight. So if, so apparently some of you are either just trying to make me feel bad, <laughs> saying you've never done that before, or you're just really, really good. So I can show you some tricks to keep you from doing that. Um, but again, on live TV, uh, it's always fun. Fun, fun. So. If I were on a straightaway, I would use my rolled hem. But because I'm in a curve, I did not like, and I do not like the way the, um, the rolled hem foot uh, works on a curve. But what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and instead of pressing this up and burning myself, I'll just go ahead and fold it over as I go. And I'll just only work at, you know, like an inch or so at a time. Once I get it going, it usually works really, really well. And I'm just going to stitch right on the edge. And I just work a little bit at a time. Get a nice little little rolled hem um, as you go. Like I said, if I'm on a straightaway, a straightaway, let me just use this real quick. And the rolled hem. Oh, I thought I had a rolled hem. So if you've never used a rolled hem before, or if you've used a rolled hem foot and without success, let me show you a little trick. Because if you're going to make a cover for, um, let's say, a casserole dish that is square or rectangle, you can definitely make the straight of ed straight edges, and it's much. I love rolled hems on a straight edge, and it is one of those things that I used to hate. I used to talk people out of getting this foot because I just didn't want to teach it. But once I learned this little trick, um, it's very, very handy. So one of the big things about this foot that's so frustrating is trying to get that to feed into this little curly cue. So we're not going to worry about that. So I'm just going to go ahead and fold over the little hem. And I'm just going to go ahead and fold it over again and get it ready. So all I'm worrying about is that first inch or so. So I just want to make that first little inch or so. And again, some of you may already know this trick, and some of you are going to be amazed. So I'm going to go ahead and 
lower this down and I'm just going to take a couple of stitches. So as you can see here, I'm not worrying about getting into the little curly cue. I am going to worry about that little thread. But once I get those first couple of stitches in, then I will come and I'll go ahead and get that in the little curly cue. And once I can get that in the little curly cue here, Again, I'm on live TV. Thank you. So once I get it into the little curly cue, now it'll just feed right in. Look at that. So if you have one of these feet and have not had success with it, give it a go. Just remember, stitch it down. Stitch it down and then feed it in and you will get that nice little rolled hem. Ooh, oh, wow. So if you have the flat fell foot, it's the same thing too. It's just get the stitches going beforehand and then feed it in. But again, like I said, when it came to the curve, it did do it and it did it nicely, except because it was on a curve, it did pleats every now and then. And I just personally didn't want that. Any questions about any of this? Okay. Now, the last thing that we're going to do on the down and dirty version is the elastic. So I don't know how many of you have the elastic foot, um, but this, this is the elastic foot. And I'm going to move my camera a bit because I want to show you something on it. But this is the elastic foot. Um, and this is a really cool tool that, uh, some of you may have and have never used because it's, it's kind of scary, um, or you don't know how to use it. Okay. Because it is a weird looking foot. Now this will use any elastic up to about a half inch wide. So this little guy here will... I can roll this around and see how all of these different sizes are the sizes of elastic that I can use, all right? And as long as it'll fit through here, you're good, all right? Now, this little guy, too, just kind of sits on top if you're not careful. But if you take a look, he's going to sit, if I'm going to push him to the back so that you can see from the back, and he's going to lock into position. See that? So let me show you that again. So once you've got your elastic in, you'll go ahead and push him into position and then push him towards the back and it'll lock into position so he's no longer flopping. So if you have this and he's flopping and you can't figure out how to make him work, just snap him in and then just push him to the back and it'll lock it into position. Okay. All right. Let's get this going. Now, I did not have any... Um, white elastic, but I have lots of colored elastic. So I'm going to use some teal, turquoise, uh, whatever you want to call it. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and feed my elastic in through here. Now you've got two openings here. This one is for your needle. So we don't want to put the elastic in there because that's where the needle's going to work. Here's where we're going to feed the elastic. And like I said, I can go up to about a half an inch. Right. I'm just going to go ahead and give myself a tail. And I'm going to bring this down and lock him in. So then I can turn this. Ooh, I happen to have it in a good spot. But then I can turn this little wheel before after and make sure that this is right where I want this to be. Can you see how the elastic is going to feed right through that little groove in the right size that it needs? Now, what this guy is going to be doing here is this is going to be creating some pressure on the elastic. And so I can adjust how much pressure I want there to be. Anything from zero being very lightweight or crank it on up to I want to really crank that in. 
but I'm going to have mine about three. So are there any questions about this so far? All right. I'm going to pop this onto the back. And let me change the foot here. Okay. And I'm going to change this because that way you can see what's happening behind as oh, well. All right. Okay. Yeah, it's very, very cool. So um, going to, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch this along the wrong side. I'm going to get rid of some of these threads because they're making me bananas. This whole, this whole little sample is making me crazy. But what I'm going to do is now I'm going to come here and I'm just going to pick a focal point off to the side. So I have my, you've got these little marks here. So my little edge over here is at the two, uh, two centimeter mark at the side or the three quarter inch um, at the side. I am going to create a, a little tail at the end. Now there's a couple of things that you can do with the tail. Um, I'm going to show you one thing, um, but I will talk about the other as well. So one of the things that a lot of us will want to try and do is start pulling on this. But that's the whole point of the foot. We don't have to do anything. We're going to just let the, the foot do the job. I'm just going to keep my edge along the edge here. And I am going to switch to a zigzag stitch. So I'm just going to get my elastic up here so this is out of my way. And I'm going to go ahead and make my stitch length a little longer so this will go a little faster. But as you can see, it'll start gathering here. And I'm going to go ahead and make it a little tighter. I'm going to exaggerate it a little bit for you all. So I'm cranking it up to five just so you can see what's happening. But can you see it gathering on in there? See how it's just creating this nice little elastic? Ooh, ah, wow. All right. So let me just come around. I'm going to show you one way I end this. And this is because I pulled on it. This is why you don't want to pull on the elastic. You want it just to feed right through. Is because when I pulled on it over here, I got it out of whack. So don't pull on it. Just let it feed through. Little guy. Now, when I come here, this is one way to end it, is I'm just going to go ahead and, oh, I know why it's having issue. It's because I have my position over. Okay. But what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to overlap it. So when I come to this part, I'm just going to go ahead and overlap it just a bit. And just trim that off. So this is one way to do it is just to overlap it. Okay. But this will create that that nice little elastic. And this is how I did this little ramekin. And let me show you here with the start and stop. So again, I just overlapped it right at the beginning and at the end to stop it. Another way that you can start and stop is let me just go ahead and get some of back in position. All right, you're too crinkled for me. What to do? So 
let me grab another piece of fabric. So what I would do here is let me get you back into position here. I just want to start. Oops. Find the wrong anchor. So I've, I'm going to leave myself a tail. I'm going to ease this back up to three because I have it way. I have it DEFCON 5 here. I'm going to turn it back to three. All right. There we go. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to stitch a little bit and then I'm going to pretend like I've come around. Come on up. And I'm going to pretend like I've come around the other side. So this is the other way we can finish it. So like if I were going to do um, a drawstring or anything like that, but this is the other way you can do it is to manually get it clean, 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 and then just run the zigzag over it yourself. All right. So now I can just come back and put on my regular foot and I can see what I'm doing and zigzag that up. But as you can see, the overlap is my favorite because if you would have not, if I would not have told you, you would not have known that. You would have not seen it. But this is the nice little ramekin how to. Ta da! All right. So let's talk a little bit before I go into some of the other stuff that I want to show you. Let's talk a little bit about um, how to embroider on tulle, um, because as you can see, I've got embroidery on tulle, and there's lots of fun stuff that you can do. So here's a different kind of food cover. This is one that just kind of drapes on top um, rather than elastics around it, um, and then you can also purchase those nice little food covers that look like umbrellas where you pull them up and open them up. All right. But these also are super cool because they come apart. So you can take this netting off very, very easy and create cute little projects. So here's one I did where I just took it apart and did a nice little embroidery. But this is again on this netting, this tool. So here I did the like pocket netting. This is called the mosquito netting. There is tool. You can use just regular straight up tool. Get this out of the way. Okay, where is my tool? So this is straight up tool like you would buy at, you know, any of the, the chain stores. Here I have, I don't know if you can see it. 
So this was an idea that I got from a high-end designer who had a jeans jacket with tulle. Um, and they just cut out the yokes in the back and all that kind of stuff. And so this is this tool. I just use black instead of yellow. I cut out the little yoke part. I'm still working on the back, but then I just added, you know, so this is turning up into one of these thousand dollar jackets that you buy on those high end designers that I'm never going to spend that kind of money for. So you can use regular tool. You can use pocketbook netting. You can use screening. So like pet screen, all that kind of stuff. Um, any of this, any of this stuff. And this pet screen, you can also purchase window screen. So the window screen, um, you can get them in the little kits. So you can take out your window screen, embroider on the, the window screen, pop it back in. It comes with a little tool to get it in all the little nooks and crannies, and you can embroider screen. Another fun thing to do with embroidered screen is to make little um, window hanging. So you can embroider on the screen and hang them in your windows. So being able to embroider on netting and screening is so Cool. So, ooh, I'll come back here. So, a couple of things that you need for. Let me don't make you sick here. So, a couple of things that you do need when you're working with um, netting is water soluble stabilizer. So, here I have Aqua Magic. So there's Aqua Magic, which is my personal favorite for my hoop stabilizer. And then I like the different dissolve aways for on top. So there's clear and melt, which does not work for this because you really have to melt it with an iron. But this is dissolve away light. And here's a dissolve away heavy. So there's just all kinds of stuff that you can use when it comes to the water soluble so whatever level you're at and however much security you need uh you got it so but this is the combination that i use for all of my embroidery so it's a water soluble the aqua magic on the bottom and the dissolve away lightweight on the top and the metal hoops if you're not familiar with the metal hoops the metal hoops are fantastic for this because I can lay my stabilizer down and I can even tuck it all into position and get everything ready to go. Then I can come and lay my tool down. And when I do this, I can make sure that it's all nice and smooth before I start. So I don't want to pull on it. I just want to make sure that there's no pleats or wrinkles or anything like that. So I don't want to like start yanking on it or anything like that. Um, and then once I have that and it's all nice and smooth, then I will come and lay my topper on top. And this is where I can move my magnets around and keep everything nice and smooth. All right, so let me switch over to embroidery. Let me bring in just a little design. I'm just going to go grab one of my little mini designs. So all of these other designs that you see here that I, I've used, so these little clovers, they came from 
the sorry, hold steady, hold, hold steady. Um, they came from the library, so I just used these little clovers from the library. This little guy here, I just used some bees from the library, so I just grabbed a couple of bees and a flowers and some bugs and just really simple. But again, you can see this is embroidered on that very lightweight uh, mosquito netting kind of stuff. So you can go really, really lightweight. And let me get you guys out of the way. Okay. All right, but I am going to just Load. Let you guys see what I'm doing. Let me see if I've got my bees here. Let's see if I can get this going. Nope. So these are too big for the little hoop, I think. Let me just quickly check. Do I have 100 by 100? I think it's too small. Nope. All right. So I'm going to get rid of this guy. I forgot to bring the single one over for you. Right, so I'm just going to come over to my minis and I'm going to grab one of my little, my little guys here. Oops. Hello. All right. So this is a really small little design. I need to tell it I'm working with the metal hoop. The petite metal hoop, and then I'm going to go ahead and go to go, and hopefully it's okay. I'm going to switch my fabric or my thread right quick. So we're not doing yellow. We're going to do green because that's the thread I have right here. last thing I was working on. So I'm going to go ahead and attach this. So do, are there any questions? Oh, there are questions. Oh my goodness. Okay. Um, The one window screens, what size needle would you use to embroider on the needle? The, um, so basically when it comes to the, let me just finish this, this will be done in like 10 seconds. But when it comes to the window screen, um, there are some that are metal. I just don't want to use the metal. I want to make sure that they're nylon or something like that. But when it comes to embroidering on any of these things, I use, I'm pausing for um, anticipation here, but I use um, just an embroidery, my size 80 embroidery needle. So I use my FAF uh, 80 embroidery needle. So there's not anything special as far as needles go. It's just. Just a regular embroidery needle. Um, there's another question. Are there any types that of uh, designs that would not work well with netting? So one of the concerns, like it depends on the netting. So when I do, So when you see this shine too, this is because I use clear and melt because I grabbed it instead of my water soluble. So that's why you're seeing that. But as you can see, I mean, these, these stitch really nicely over here. I did not use the clear melts. One of these I did not use clear melts. But as you can see, they, it stitches nicely here. And even here, what you'll see is, this is stitching. 
but this has even just like really, really running stitches here. And as you can see, if you're looking up close, which nobody should be looking at your stuff up that close, does everybody know what to do when people start pulling your stuff and doing this to it? When they're looking at your stuff this close, you smack them in the back of the head. They have no business being that close. So when you look at this from a distance, this looks fine, right? When you start getting close, then all of a sudden you can start seeing the imperfections. But this looks fine on this netting. Now, this kind of netting or even the tool, you can get by with much more open designs because there's more for that to grab onto. Does that make sense? And when you have more of the open weave here, that's where I need more of the solid designs because there's less here for it to hold on to. So having a more solid design, it starts holding on to itself as well. But I have not seen anything that doesn't work really well. Um, it just depends on the type. Now, if I would have done that little, um, like for instance, if I would have tried to do this little candle wicking stitch on this, can you see where some of the stitches might just fall into the great beyond in between where there's nothing for it to grab onto? Is that making sense for you guys? And if you have something formal, so let's say you were going to do something on um, like, you know, a, a bridal gown or on a prom dress or something like that. And you're very, very nervous about stitching on the tool. Go get some tool. Just go get some tool. Do the embroidery on this. Then you can trim out the design and then stitch around the outside. So again, the only people that are gonna see it are the people all up in your business like this and you just smack them. But you can stitch embroidery from tool onto other things. So like if you wanna embroider on tennis shoes, for instance, can't get a tennis shoe into your, your machine, but you can embroider on the tool and then either glue it or stitch it to um, a tennis shoe or anything that you have is weird like that. So knowing how to sew on tool is awesome. And I've used a size, my embroidery 80 needle for all of this. So I don't, I didn't jump through a lot of different tool. So here's a little bread basket that I, I made as well. And this guy, the problem, the, the reason this looks weird is because I don't have a bodkin to feed through. Um, but I just created a little embroidery on, this is like mosquito netting. Um, and I added the binding here and I added binding around the top and just made a little bread basket. So you can just throw all your rolls in there, um, and open it up and pull things out. So let me show you. All right, let me pop this out. Let me tell this that this is finished. So here, here you can see it created a, the little embroidery design. The water soluble this can just go ahead and just pull off. And then you can save this for later. And then I usually will trim this down. So I try to trim down as much as I can, as close as I can. And I again also save this extra stabilizer. So my extra aqua magic. I save, oh, let me get myself out of there. Come on, come on. So my extra aqua magic like this, I save. And when I make freestanding lace, I do not trim any of the, 
the stabilizer away. I will add all these extra pieces to the water because I want to create stiffness. I want it to dissolve, but I want it to create that stiffness so that my freestanding lace is very, very stiff. And by adding extra of this into the water, that does help create, it's almost like adding starch to your freestanding lace. So I like to do that. And then this guy makes great little pieces if you just want to cover up little bits and pieces or like if you're doing buttonholes, stuff like that. It works really well. Um, but this is what I'll be left with. And then this I will take over and just throw in a bowl. I just throw all my, my stuff in a bowl and just let it uh, dissolve. Now, when using Aqua Magic or any kind of dissolve away, if you're having trouble and it's not melting the way people have promised that it would, um, your water is going to be either too hot or too cold. So you want your temperature of the water you're melting it in to be literally room temperature. So if it's room temperature and you drop it in, it's like magic. And for years, I was always having my water a little too hot. So it, um, Oh, buh, 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 buh. so it would like goo instead of heat. So one of the other things that I want to show you, I know that I'm out of time, but I wanted to show you one more. I may not be able to show you the whole process of making it, but you will kind of see the idea here. All right. Um, but when I did my little down and dirty one, Give me your little stinker. So when I did my little down and dirty one, um, I didn't have any raw edge. This wasn't very clean, nothing like that. So it was just all raw, raw, raw. But on this one, I want there, I want it to be clean on both sides. So I did the same trick here, where at the beginning, when I put my two fabrics right sides together and I stitched around here. The difference that I did here was I ran a basting stitch. So I basted it, I flipped it, I clipped it, I flipped it, I pressed it, and then I took the basting stitch out so that I could lay it on top of each other. And I could come around here and stitch that again. So here I can use the straight stitch or I can um, do a zigzag stitch, etc but I can stitch that up. And then because I have the two pieces here, here I would just use, and I'm just gonna grab a little piece and show you, because I'm out of time to show you the whole thing. But you've already seen me do this, so I'm not gonna do this again. This is the netting. Let me bring this up so that you can, I mean, this big pet screen, but look how beautiful it stitches. So, I mean, you don't have to put any extra fuss into it. It just stitches gorgeous. Um, and whatever you're going to stitch on it, whether you're going to make a bag or whether you're going to do a window screen or whether you're going to make food covers, um, it's, it's, it's good. So let me just pop this on. And actually, I'm going to pop my my quarter inch because I am going to show you this as well. So one thing about the quarter of an inch that I told you all these little marks on here were cool and why I recommend getting these quarter inch feet for all kinds of different things is because all these little marks mean something, right? So let me just cut a straight edge here. All right, but as I'm going along and let's say I wanted to stitch along at a quarter of an inch and I want to turn at a quarter of an inch. That's what all these little marks are for. But that's what all these little marks are for. So right at the edge of my foot here, this is a quarter of an inch. This little guy here, this mark right down the center, is where my needle is. And this little guy is a quarter of an inch from this needle. And this guy is a quarter of an inch from this needle. 
This foot is a quarter of an inch from the needle. The inside toe is an eighth of an inch. So when I want to do edge stitching, you can use that. The, um, the quarter of an inch with a blade, with a guide, has a blade right here. The stitch in the ditch has a blade right in the center. But these guides here, so sorry, so sorry, I've just bumped it, sorry. But these guides here really do help when you're doing turning or when you want to do like echo quilting or anything like that. So I'm going to stop with this edge to this quarter of an inch line here. And when I turn, you can see, oh, look at that, right on that quarter of an inch. But this is why I love all these feet. Um, so I do have I do have all of the feet with all the little blades because I use these little marks all the time. Okay, so like if I wanted to do an edge stitch, I can do that as well. So in this case, I'm just going to use the inside of my toe. Go! All right. So let me show you this real quick because when it comes to this, so I would just go ahead and stitch this around like so. And then when it comes to this, you can use like pre made binding. You can make your own binding. This is just a half inch uh, binding. But I'm just going to go ahead and open this guy up. And I am going to fold this over. I'm going to go ahead and stitch right in there. All right. And I would just stitch around. All right, where are you? And then when I come around to the other side, so I'm coming around. The mountain here. So I'm coming around the other side. So I've stitched all the way around and I'm coming around this side. And when I get here, do you see how I folded this over? I want to do the same. I do not want to overlap because this is where I'm going to feed my elastic through. So I will come through here. And then when I'm done, I will come and wrap this around. And stitch that down. So if you're going to make your own bias strip, make sure that it's on the bias because if you're going to go around a curve, if you're going around a straight edge, you don't have to worry about that so much. But we don't want these, oops, I lost some thread somewhere. But we don't want these overlapping because this is where we are going to feed our elastic through. So we'll feed our elastic through and when your elastic comes up, we'll just zigzag the ends together. So you feed your elastic through. I just want to show you for those, some of you may not know, but we'll feed that through. So that I'll have an elastic piece sticking out this it, through here. And I'll have another piece sticking out here. And what I'll do is I'll just overlap those and zigzag and then trim it up. Okay. Okay, any final questions? I know I went over, I apologize for that. Um, are there any final questions that I can answer? Um, so if not, I wanna thank you for coming. The next FAF Facebook Live is going to be Thursday, July 6th at 2 p.m. Central with Meredith McClanahan. Um, She's going to be having teaching tips and tricks for sewing and creating with rope. So um, I know rope is uh, rope projects are extremely popular right now. So make sure you tune in. That's July 6th at 2 p.m. Central. 
And the next MySoNet Live is going to be Wednesday, July 12th at 2 p.m. Central. Again, with Meredith, she's hogging all the Facebook Lives. And she will be creating an in-the-hoop zipper pouch using designs from the Word Sculpt Wizard. So Word Sculpt and an in-the-hoop zipper pouch. Hmm. So make sure you tune in. That's going to be July 12th um, at 2 p.m. Central. And I want to, again, thank everybody for coming. And as always, I will peruse the comment section for a while. And if there's any further questions, um, you can always come back and ask, and we will make sure we try and answer them. So thank you. And until next time, see you in July 6th. Bye.